So hi everyone, welcome to my second podcast. In this video, we have another remote software developer who started his journey at a 6.5 LPA offer and this month itself started their remote software development job. We'll understand what was their journey, how much money did they make before, how much money do they make now and what are the tech stacks that are very comfortable with, how did they approach the company, so on and so forth. With that, let's get right into it. Hi Rahul, how's it going? Uh, hey Harkir, everything is fine. What about you? Great man. Kampe, uh, where do you stay currently? I'm staying in Chandigarh right now. Uh, oh, nice. Office. Yeah. That's superb. Uh, which sector do you stay in? I live in 66. Nice. I live in 67. So we're pretty close. And that's pretty close. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so tell me everything, bro. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, which college did you go to? What degree did you pursue? So uh, I stay in the middle only, not from a tier one, not from a tier three. I'm from a tier two college from an IIT Jalandhar. And I'm from a non CS background. It's a specialization in mechanical engineering. So I graduated last year in 2022 and started my journey as a software engineer in Daily Hunt, which is a Bangalore-based company. And yeah, um, graduated from an individual under, as you said. Got it. So your on-site offer was in Daily Hunt and that was uh, in Bangalore? Yeah, in Bangalore. Yeah. Got it. Uh, and how long did you work at Daily Hunt? I worked at Daily Hunt for like three months. Oh, wow. uh, in the ending of the second month, I just uh, resigned from there and served as notice period for one month because I had to join another company called Ticket.com, which was also a remote company from Indonesia. So, and then uh, worked there for around 1.4 months, then just cracked this remote offer recently and joined this this month only. Oh, got it. So you've had worked three months at Daily Hunt and then a month and a half at Ticket.com and then you're, yeah. oh, wow, that's, that's like pretty quick. So you graduated this year itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got it. Amazing. So you're a 2023 graduate. You started from an on-site job, 6.5 LPA. Then you moved to your first remote offer, worked there for a month and a half. And then you've finally cracked a full-time remote offer. And tell me more about how you approached this company and how much did you ask for compensation? Did you have other experiences in the past that made you arrive at a number? Yeah, actually, so my hunt started after daily uh, from ticket.com only. One of the students from, uh, I don't know which IIT has posted that they have uh, gotten a job in um, this ticket.com. And then I approached him on LinkedIn and he haven't applied for two, three months, replied me for two, three months. And then basically he replied me and he said that, I don't think so if my company is hiring or not, but I can give you the HR email ID. So I reached them out on email and I said that, I, you know, it's a very weird thing to ask for a job on an email. I didn't know that cold emailing was a thing back then because I was working in Daily Hunt, which was a, which was also off campus offer, but I was in campus when I got that. So, um, but uh, yeah, so then I approached to the HR and then she gave me her cell phone number. And then, then I said, uh, when I called, I was just very uh, hesitant to ask her for an interview and then, then I said I'm very sorry that I'm calling you like this <laughs> but can you give me an interview then he, then she said that yeah, yeah that's my job so that is when I got to know that asking for a things get a lot of things done so yeah then she gave me a test link I, actually two uh, of OA has happened online assessments and then there was three rounds of interviews and yeah, then I basically got there into this company just by luck, I guess, maybe by connection. By that time, I started watching your videos and you used to talk a lot about how you have to build your connections and stuff like that. So yeah, um, maybe I started. Uh, so everyone uh, I see who is getting a job on LinkedIn, I used to send them friend request and uh, what and ask these people basically if your company is hiring for a job, if your company is hiring for a job. Most of the people don't reply. But the one thing that the people who reply are very, very reliant, you can rely on them. And I have made some good uh, relationships through LinkedIn only. Got it. So that's your second company. And what was your tech stack at Daily Hunt? And did they ask any of these questions during the interviews? What was the online assessment like? So online assessment was completely based on DSA. Uh, there were two DSA questions, both of the rounds. And then after that, there were three set rounds of interviews. One was completely on DSA. One was... Uh, they just had a candid discussion with what I was doing in Daily Hunt. And the third was a system design round, which was very new to me because I never had any system round, system design round back then. But I used to uh, be very curious about how systems work at Daily Hunt and started watching YouTube videos from Gaurav Sen and just grabbed the things here and there and just uh, somehow cleared that round to get into uh, ticket.com. The main thing that they asked was DSA only at that time because I was a fresher and nothing much I can provide to them other than DSA. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And so 
your new remote job offer which i'm assuming is like where you started you're starting to get paid in dollars now and you've approached a company in a very niche field how did you approach yeah. them and what was the interview process there so yeah same thing uh, one of my junior got there into that company uh, so i just i just google uh, link searched all of the people that were working in that company and sent all of them a friend request i made a template and just sent all of them that was a, just a very small company 50 people worked there i guess i sent 40 of them uh, my cv asking for a job if, if you are looking for a candidate from india if you are looking for a candidate from india uh, so this person also didn't reply for 6 months but one day he was on a trip to hawaii i guess so he was very in a chill mode so he started looking at his linkedin and he saw that someone has sent me a resume um, for a job so then he uh, then he said that i am not giving a job right now but i will approach you after 6 months maybe we'll hire from india again and then i said that okay this is basically over for me he won't approach me anymore right. but yeah uh, i guess after 2 3 months uh, in um, september only he approached me and he said that uh, if you still up for the job if you are still up for the interview i said yeah i am up for the interview then he said that you have to do it tonight only so he approached me like 10 o'clock in <laughs> 10 or 10 pm and then he said that uh, let's do a coffee chat at 12 and we will schedule an interview after that and i thought it would be a one round interview but that was a four round interview and two rounds of behavioral interview after that and then at that point that's a very uh, kubernetes docker based company we do uh, scanning uh, of kubernetes pods and docker containers and look out for vulnerabilities in that and gives a report uh, the thing that distinguishes that company from other people who are doing this is we do it this at runtime. Mm -hmm. So everything that is a file getting accessed or a command in the CLI, we wrote everything that is uh, running in the pod at that point of time. So yeah, but they asked me a lot of things about Kubernetes and Docker, how it works, what is the internal architecture of Docker, Kubernetes, stuff like that. And they also asked me a lot about their tech stack, which is Flask. Uh, I use Flask in Daily Hunt, but I used to do Java and Golang in Ticket.com. But yeah, uh, I remember a few things and then told them I'm not a very uh, confident person in class, but they told me that you can Google stuff. Yeah. That was the best thing that anyone can get an interviewee because yeah. it is, uh, other than that, I haven't experienced this, that someone is asking you to Google stuff. Right. But yeah, there were four rounds. One was SRE based, one was system design, one was DSA, and one was a candidate discussion attitude in a last company. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And that is pretty much standard on remote jobs. Uh, K1, the interview happens very ad hoc. They'll randomly be an opening, someone left or, you know, some new project came and then they'll just ping everyone ke jo bhi hai, ao. and, you know, from India, they're like, Haan, isko to job ki. So they're like, Haan, do it on our clock or, or like, don't do it. So that's pretty common. I've done that many times. And then again, the interview process that he said is pretty much the same. No one really cares if you Google because in your job also, you will eventually Google. So it doesn't make sense to, you know. <clears throat> not let the interviewee Google during the process and interview process, as you said, one DSA around one system design, one way like standard across remote jobs, I think. Um, so superb. And let's talk about some logistics slash compensation numbers. How much could you can share a range? You don't have to tell the exact numbers, but like how, how was your growth in the past six months as you've changed three jobs? So my salary basically got a hundred percent hike every time I switched. So, uh, my, on campus offer was 6.5 LPA. Then I got a 100% a hike in uh, into Daily Hunt and then got a 100% hike in Ticket.com and then got a around 150% to 170% hike in uh, Rapid Food, which is the company that I recently joined. Got it. Um, the range is around uh, whatever that you suggest to uh, ask for a fresher to a remote company. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's an interesting story because I asked some 100k dollars earlier and then they just never replied to me. So I thought I should stick it to 40 to 50,000 and that's what they agreed on. Got it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I think once you get in, you can always, you know, uh, make your way up the ladder and then reach 100k pretty easily. But yeah, to get in the door doesn't make sense to, you know, pinch pennies and doesn't matter if you're getting 50, 70 or 100k. Eventually, I'm pretty confident in your skills. If you've like grown 100% three times, I'm sure you can like easily reach one more hundred percent and you're there like right you're at six figures so uh, thanks for you for motivating everyone that everyone can get a remote offer if they are very good in what they do so that is how i got that motivation and got to know a lot of things from you uh yeah 
Right, for sure. Thank you so much. And any advice that you have for other people who are now, you know, struggling in 6.5 LP offers and trying to find their first remote offer? Um, the one advice that I give to every of my junior is that people uh, skip on-campus placements in the search of a remote offer straight out of college. I think that no one is giving a remote offer to someone who haven't worked a year in the industry. So maybe you can get a on-campus offer or maybe get a job first and get the gist of what the software engineering really is. Uh, take interest in a lot of things in the architecture of, uh, that your company is working on, the tech stack that they're working on, and then start reaching out to people. I think that cold emailing and cold messaging uh, works brilliantly if you do it well. And yeah, I just think that uh, uh, right now, maybe there is a lot of hype around tech jobs, around remote jobs, actually. So everyone is looking for a remote job and they are skipping one of the on-campus placements or, or, or other offers that are in office. So that is a very bad thing to do because you need some kind of experience to tell the other company that you have done something. Uh, maybe that can be GSOC, etc. Or maybe you have done a lot of contribution during the, your college. But if you haven't done all of that, you have done, done basic DSA, then maybe get to a company first and then start looking for a remote job. Uh, getting a remote job as a fresher straight out of college is very, very tough according to me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think I did the same. I did an on-site job for a while and then... I think once you get there, it's much easier, but yeah, you shouldn't, you know, leave the options on the table. I totally agree to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, when you're in the campus and the placements are closed, maybe you have a day zero and you are not getting placed day one, not getting placed day two, not getting placed. So then that creates a lot of panic in your mind if you don't have a backup job. But if you have a backup job and you are uh, free for next six months in your college, maybe then you can look out for a, a remote opportunity. But if you are just out of, uh, if you're just preparing for placements and looking for a remote opportunity, that is very hard. Maybe get a backup job first and then start looking for other opportunities. Uh, that is what I did. And uh, yeah, I suggest everyone to do this only. Get a backup offer. That can be anything in this uh, time of recession. That can be 3 LPA, 4 LPA, whatever works for you. But yeah, you everyone should get a backup job. Yeah, I totally agree to that. And how's your friend circle like? Uh, is everyone sort of now trying to get into remote jobs? Is, are people in on-site jobs? Do you see this a lot around you now that people are, you know, aiming for remote jobs? Yeah, actually, you created a lot of hype around remote jobs, honestly. So every one of my friend watch every one of your video. Uh, we also have some post discussions or whatever you have said. We have a Discord channel for that where we discuss whatever you say. And most of my friends have also joined your cohort. Uh, one of my friends also got a op joined your cohort only and got an opportunity to work for a company from US only, Goldcast it is. Uh, he was working in Munstack, but then he uh, sharpened his skills, maybe uh, got some advice from you personally. I don't I don't know exactly. But then he also cracked a remote job. One of my flatmates is also working in Rapid Foot only. He's also my junior, um, Anmol. And yeah, uh, the hype around the remote jobs is huge at this point of time. Uh, yeah, every one of my friends who is working a job in Bangalore and uh, getting troubled by the traffic is looking for a remote job right now. Uh, but I don't, I'm not sure how many of them are getting a remote job. But yeah, everyone is looking for one right now. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe in a few years, we'll see where remote work becomes the norm. Right now, it still says it's pretty niche. One, in terms of hiring and two, uh, you know, in terms of the kind of people who can grab it from India. But I feel... I don't know. As you do it, you'll probably tell 10 people and then, you know, the tree sort of keeps growing and at some point, I feel it'll become the normal Indian companies will pay like a lot of money and be remote friendly. We'll see. Yeah. Actually, I think that the companies from US are pretty lean. Oh, yeah, they sure. don't hire a lot of people like Indian companies like you or in Goldman Sachs. So Goldman took 10, 15 students from my college. Yeah. But if you're looking for a company, you are targeting a company, maybe let's XYZ company. They will and they are working from giving jobs to Indian students from US they will hire one developer every six months. So they're yeah. not in masses. So that's why maybe if you're targeting some companies re who are providing jobs remotely, the competition will be so huge that I don't think so. It's a good thing to do as a fresher. For sure. I totally agree. I think, I mean, I think it's less about fresher. I think it's more about, you know, you being really good because as you said, only one person they're going to hire from time to time but if you price yourself humbly like you price yourself pretty humbly for like a us car company for a us key company 50k us dollars is like a steal right to get a good software developer for that uh, but that said i'm sure like you're pretty good in your skills which is i you know and you have to go through six interviews which in itself is like a feat to you know crack all six interviews so a combination of being really good and being at the right place at the right time you you had the network that sort of led you there 
uh, is probably a good recipe but but we'll see i'm excited to see how like more do more pod- podcasts like these and, and meet more people like you so yeah thank you for coming on the podcast rahul and uh, super excited to see your journey after this whenever i'm in chandigarh let's meet again and yeah sure let's catch up in chandigarh sometime done uh, we are pretty close actually yeah yeah for those of you who don't know we live like half a kilometer away and he lives in the society where i you know the bachpan said i wanted to buy a house there and he already lives there so we, the first time we met i asked him kya price chal raha kitne ka mil raha hai because i always wanted to buy a house in that society so we'll see cool well have a good day see you guys bye bye